let your will be done in our lives. Father, I decrease that you may increase. It doesn't matter what I spoke at the 730 service. It doesn't matter what I studied for. God, you take over me. Take over this service. Open the ears of your children. Open the hearts to receive your word. God, so that it can bear fruit in our lives. God, as a result of us getting up today and making our way through the snow, whatever you had to shovel out, God, we just come empty, asking you to fill us till we want no more. Have your way in all that is said and all that is received. May your power, your glory, your anointing fill this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, I am so excited to share this word with you. I've read, we're going to turn to the book of Nehemiah. I've read Nehemiah so many times, but this time in reading Nehemiah, the Lord has unlocked some truths. And I believe that as a result of you being here, that God has appointed for these truths to be planted in your life like never before. So I decree and I declare on today that as you listen, that you will hear the word of God and that it will change the very core of what you're believing God for. I silence the voice of the enemy right now that no doubt, no doubt will be in this room. Because if you can listen with the ears of faith, God is going to unlock some secrets in your life and you will no longer be the same. How many no longer want to be the same in this room right now? God is calling us to a higher place. And I believe it because up until four days ago, even as I was studying the word four days ago, the Lord unlocked something in me. And I said, my God, what you want to do in the kingdom right now and the instructions that you want to give to us are so life-changing, so full of revelation that we can no longer be the same. It's up to you. Because in Deuteronomy 28, it says you'll be blessed coming in and you'll be blessed going out. So if you're going to believe God that you're going to be blessed as you came in, trust me, you'll be blessed as you go out. Do we receive that word today? Amen. We're going to be blessed in the city. We're going to be blessed in the field. We're going to be blessed as we come, blessed as we go. I don't care your age, your economic status. God wants to give you more today. Amen. Do you want more today? Amen. He is a God that cannot lie. As I was studying, the Lord, I, I was talking to Pastor Matt and I said, you know, what? I mean, there's so much that's going on in the world. There's so much going on in our city. We just had a, a shooting, and, and I know one of the young men has passed away. I'm not sure about the other two, but I said, my God, you've made me a key for the city. So I need you to do more in me so that I can do more for my city. And that's what I see that Nehemiah did. Nehemiah chapter 1, it starts out like this. Chapter 1, verse 1, the memoirs of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. It was the month of Kislev in the 20th year. So I had been studying, I've been reading, I've been asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want to say to your people? And it was four days ago that I was reviewing Lord, I just want to make sure that this is the word you want me to speak. And he stopped me. He stopped me at it was the month of Kislev. And he had me study Kislev. K 
Kislev is this month in the Jewish calendar. Kislev is the month of December. It's not the whole month. It's December 1st through the 29th. So as of today, I'm going to show you how to walk in Kislev. But you only have 19 days because Kislev is December 1st through the 29th. You have 19 days to be serious about what God wants to do in your life. Kislev is in the Jewish calendar. And I believe that as God is unlocking this truth for us, he wants us to begin to study the Jewish calendar so that we can have power and authority in every month that we walk in. Every month that God created has a sphere going in the atmosphere. So in the month of Kislev, Nehemiah, his brother came from Jerusalem and he said this. In verse 3, his brother comes and he asked his brother, what is the condition of Jerusalem? And they told him this, the exile survivors who are left there in the province are in bad shape. Conditions are appalling. The wall of Jerusalem is still rubble. The city gates are still cinders. And when Nehemiah heard this, he sat down and wept. He mourned for days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Is our city in shambles? Are the conditions appalling? God is saying, what are you going to do about it? Well, in Kivlev, in Kislev, this is what happens in Kislev. Kislev is a time where you are to fall before the Lord and weep for your nation. Fall before the Lord and weep for your family, your unsaved loved ones. Fall before the Lord and weep, cry out fast, and ask the Lord for instructions on what to do. The month of Kislev is a month that's filled with dreams. One of the things that the Lord showed me about the month of Kislev is that your sleep is attacked more in Kislev. You know why your sleep is attacked? Because the Lord is trying to download strategies. It's not, it's not enough that he aligned the earth so that it gets darker earlier. It gets darker earlier because he wants you to sleep more. He wants you to sleep more so that he can give you more dreams. He wants to give you more dreams so he can give you more strategy. So isn't it like the enemy to try to wrestle with your sleep so that your, your visions and dreams cannot be downloaded from, from the Lord. So this is what I say to you, those of you who are having a hard time sleeping. Every time you cannot fall asleep, pull out your notebook and begin to write down the strategies and the visions and the dreams that God is trying to download. And as soon as you begin to write those things down, I guarantee you, you'll get tired. Because the enemy does not want you before the throne of God. Because these strategies, these visions, these downloads are to rebuild the city. The other thing about Kislev, the month that we're in right now, the Jewish calendar month Kislev, K-I-S-L-E-V, Kislev. We are going to leave here walking in a Kislev anointing. In the month of Kislev, not only are you dreaming, but God is renewing your hope. When he renews your hope, it means he's increasing your faith. When he increases your faith, it means that he's giving you more light. When light comes, darkness is erased. God wants to erase the darkness from your life. This is a time when careful instruction comes from the Lord. How do I know? Because we see this in Nehemiah. Nehemiah, when we look down, he says, when I heard this, 
and verse 4, I wept. I sat down and I wept. I mourned for days. I fasted and I prayed. And I said, God, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, loyal to his covenant and faithful to those who love him and obey his commands, look at me. Listen to me. Pay attention to this prayer of your servant that I'm praying day and night. Intercession for your servants, the people of Israel, confessing the sins of the people. And I'm including myself, I and my ancestors who have sinned against you. See, Nehemiah knew that it wasn't just about other people that were sinning. He was sinning too. And he said, God, help me to get it right. I remember... It was about seven years ago. There was a young woman who came to watch night service. She had a pink cat suit on, and it was cut all the way back, all open, cut all the way down. I was sitting on the other side of the sanctuary, and I saw people looking like, what in the world? I saw all the looks of everyone. So I went to Pastor Chris, I think at the, it was either Pastor Chris or someone was standing next to me. And I said, can I borrow your jacket? I took the jacket and I covered her. To this day, she says to me, I remember the day that you covered me. I didn't judge her because guess what? When I came to Jesus, I didn't have a cat suit on, but I was a hot mess. God is saying, listen, she's right there. Where are you at, angel? She's somewhere in here. There you go, girl. I covered her. She's still sitting here, covered by his grace. God is saying, listen, I'm making you an oracle in the city because I need you to begin to cover our young people, cover our old, cover the aging, cover the disabled, cover Verse 7, he says, we've treated you like dirt, God. We do treat God like dirt. Because when you're, when you're asked to clap or give the Lord a shout of praise, you know it sounds like this. God is saying, haven't I done so much for you? So much! treating me like dirt. I've come to set the captives free. We haven't done what you told us. We haven't followed your commands. We haven't respected the decisions you gave to Moses. All the same, remembering the warning you posted to your servants, if you betray me, I'll scatter you to the four winds. But if you come back to me and do what I tell you, I'll gather you up, I'll gather the scattered people, wherever they ended up, I'll put them back in the place I chose to mark with my name. Well, there they are, your servants, your people whom you so powerfully and impressively redeemed, O oh Master. Listen to me, listen to your servant's prayer and to all your servants who delight in honoring you and make me successful today so that I may get what I want from the king. How many people need something from the king today? Well, four days ago when he opened my eyes to Kislev, I started calling out things that I want from the king. And I'm a person who writes stuff down, who has lists, who has goals, who has visions, who has dreams. But the Lord told me that this is the month that you're going to see a different power in anointing because you're going to walk in the calendar of Kislev. He wants to unlock it for you too. See, some of you will leave here today and you'll forget about Kislev. But those of you who put Kislev into action, you're going to see a power in anointing flow through your life like never before. God showed it to me. He said, Mona, there will be people that will be sitting in the congregation that will put this word into practice and they will have life and have it more abundantly. I'm telling you, I sat with Stephanie. Stephanie, God is going to do a great thing in you because you are a woman who's obedient. You put things into practice. You're faithful. And I'm telling you, the day that you were sitting at your computer and you said, Lord, I want to go. I want to go to that conference. I did not know that you were sitting there at your desk 
about to go on and pay $200 for a ticket. But God knew. He knew that someone was going to call me and say, I have tickets. This woman is sitting at her computer. Kids Live is in operation. She's saying, I want to go. She clicks. And it's sold out. At the same moment, someone is texting me saying, I have tickets. I've already purchased a table for the staff. So I say, well, let me, okay, she comes into my mind. Did I know that she was sitting in that same moment? Synchronicity. This is what God wants to do in your life. When you begin to call on the name of Jesus and you begin to call on the things that you want in this season, he's going to put things in operation. He's going to move it. He's going to shake it. He's going to have it come together so that whatever you call on the name of Jesus, it will happen for you. But you cannot have any doubt. You know why we operate in doubt and we can't believe God? Because of our forefathers. And God told me, in the month of Kislev, your words have so much power. When people come to me and they talk to me negative, I dismiss it. My friend wrote me the other day. She said, it sounds like you're overwhelmed. No, I am not overwhelmed. I don't live in being overwhelmed. I have a lot going on like everybody else. But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I am not overwhelmed. He's called me to a higher place, a new dimension, new levels, new devils, new people I got to slay. I'm a dragon slayer in the kingdom of God. This month, in the month of Kislev, is the month where the tribe of Benjamin operates. The tribe of Benjamin operates in the month of Kislev because the tribe of Benjamin is very skilled at shooting arrows. God is saying, where do you want your arrow to land? Where do you want your arrow to land? If you don't have a plan, it's not going to land anywhere. You have to have a plan. You have to know that I'm going to shoot the bullseye. This is also the month that your name gets changed. See, when Benjamin was born, his father, his mother called him Ben-Onai, the son of my pain. And then she died. His father said, you're going to be renamed to the son of my right hand. This month is the, na- is the month that God will change your name. In the month of December, over 20, I don't even know how many years ago, I was praying to God, and God gave me this revelation for a couple of days ago. He said, do you realize that you are operating in Kislev, and you didn't even know it? I was praying. I was in this domestic violence marriage. I was separated, and I said, God, you're going to do three things. I'm going to catch him in adultery. He's going to die, or you're going to restore. It was in December, the month of Kislev. He died. A woman came to my house, opened my Bible, kissed it, and she said, you're Abigail. He renamed me in the month of December. Years later, I received a prophetic word. Mona, you are a businesswoman. You have thoughts that other people don't think about. Anyone who knows me in the office will tell you, I'm an anomaly because I can put numbers together. I should have been a scientist. (laughs) Not really. We'll leave scientists for Shakira. (laughs) I can put numbers together, facts, all of that. God named me Abigail and then placed me This is the month he wants to rename you. This is the month, the month of Kislev. This is the month of dreams. This is the month of hope. This is the month of light. This is the month of divine strategy. We see that Nehemiah, he received divine strategy. He was ready, he was set, and then he dared to do the impossible. When we look at verse 10, chapter 1, 
He says, well, there they are, your servants, your people whom you so powerfully and impressively redeemed. Oh, master, listen to me. Listen to your servant's prayer. And yes, to all your servants who delight in honoring you. Make me successful today so that I may get what I want from the king. And then he has this sentence. This sentence just blows my mind. I was the cupbearer to the king. He didn't know when the king was going to call him, but he knew he was the cupbearer. So what does that mean? That means he has presence with the king. But this was no ordinary position. This was a man that had to take a hit for the king. He had to drink the wine before it was presented to the king. And if the wine was poisoned, he would die. So now we see in, in, in chapter 2, it says it was the month of Nisan. In the same year. In the month of Nisan is March. It's Passover month. So in December, he's weeping, he's crying, he's praying, he's calling out to God. God gives him divine instruction and revelation. He gives him an opportunity to go before the king. And just three, four months later... And the king says to him, he had never been sad before the king. And the king says, why the long face? You know what that says to me? It says to me that we need to operate in good attitudes. So that when we're different, someone recognizes the difference. See, a lot of us have attitudes all the time. You're racing in traffic. You get to work. Y'all, uh, uh. What's wrong with you today? Oh, I just had to drive all the way here. So everybody gets used to you just having a scowl face. But obviously, Nehemiah was this level-headed dude. So the moment he gets called in to see the king to present the wine, the king notices that something is wrong with my cupbearer. Listen, the king did not have to ask him, but obviously the king had a love relationship with Nehemiah. Wherever you are, wherever God has placed you, treat that thing as a love relationship so that when you're in need of something, and the Lord downloads the strategy, it can be given to you. And you will know it's from the Lord. The king, the king says, why, why the long face? You're not sick. You're not depressed. And, and that made Nehemiah all the more agitated. He said, long live the king. And why shouldn't I be depressed when the city, the city where my family is buried, is in ruins and the city gates have been reduced to cinders? And the king says this. So what do you want? Are you ready for when someone comes to you and says, what do you want? See, I have my corporation listed out. I have stuff listed so that when someone asks me what I want, I got that running list. I'm trying to train my kids. I'm saying, I said to Aaliyah yesterday, I said, Aaliyah, what do you want? And she said, I mean, I have everything I want. I said, everything? She said, well, you know, I really want this YouTube channel. I said, well, what do you need for it? She said, well, I, you know, I need some stuff. I said, well, girl, you better write that list down. And she was like, huh? I said, write your list now. What if someone comes up to you and says, what do you want? You need to have a list. I always had a list from the time I was a little girl. Because in my mind... If somebody came to me and asked me what I wanted, I needed to be ready. And I believe that's what God is saying in this word right here. It's one thing to say I want a house. Are you saving? Are you searching the market? I find that a lot of our people say things they want, but they're not prepared for it. I want a husband. What you doing? You want a husband? Stop looking a hot mess. How he going to find you? I want a new car. 
I want a bigger house. Well, do you know a bigger house is going to cost bigger electricity bill? You can't even keep your electricity bill on now. I want a bigger house. Are, are you going to be able to pay for someone to plow when the snow hits? Half y'all can't come to church when a little tiny bit of snow comes. You waiting for the sun to melt it, but you want a new house. What I see in Nehemiah is Nehemiah was waiting for this opportunity to get before the king because he had everything listed out. What if the king asked him and he was just like, um, oh gosh, uh, I just know I need to get to Jerusalem. No, this is what he said. He said, if it pleased the king, verse 4 or 5, if it please the king and if the king thinks well of me, send me to Judah, to the city where my family is buried so that I can rebuild it. How, the king says, how long will this work take and when do you expect to return? Because, I mean, it sounds like you're asking me for a long vacation. He says, well, if it please the king, please provide me with the letters to the governors across the Euphrates that authorize my travel through to Judah. See, this is masterful. Then he says, also, in order to Asaph, keeper of the king's force, to supply me with the timber for the beams of the temple fortress, the wall of the city, and the house where I'll be living. I mean, he had everything listed down. I need a house to live. I need timber. I need, I need my paperwork to get and navigate to where I need to go. I, I'm going to need helpers. I mean, he had this thing down. Do you have it down? for what you're asking God for? I'm saying, God, um, if I'm going to have this, this building, this corporation, I mean, I'm driving through the city just looking for buildings. I'm like, hmm, I don't know if that building's big enough. I mean, I like the outside, but uh, I mean, if I'm going to have a place where girls and women come for, to build their confidence and self-esteem, if I'm going to have a research institute, it's got to be, oh, it's got to look good. And I'm looking. How much is that building going to cost? Well, what kind of furniture will I need? What kind, what's my staff look like? Well, what's going to happen when I'm traveling? What's going to happen? I mean, God, I need a driver because if I'm, you know, I'm going to have all this work to do. I need to be able to sit in the car and do my work. God, who's, who's, who's going to book the travel? Who's going to take care of the house? I mean, I can only be gone like twice a month because Pastor Matt will, you know, you know. I mean, I'm thinking every detail out. Because when I present it to the king, and when he asks me what I want, I got to be ready. I'm saying, Lord, okay, I mean, right now, and, and, and you guys can think I'm tripping, and I don't care. Because I'm confident that I'm going to be super famous. So right now, this is what I'm doing. When I go out, I go out incognito. I put my baseball cap on. And I'm walking around, I'm like, okay, so when I'm known, this is what I got to do. And let me tell you, the other day, I was in the office, and I had my planner out. And so at the bottom of my planner, it says, what are your, what are your top three goals for 2018? My first thing was fame. Fame. Famous for Jesus, because we need money in the kingdom of God. Amen. Money. Not for Mona. Listen, I have everything I need. I don't need anything else. I need money for the kingdom of God to be advanced. So then I said, empower girls and women. And I just left those two hanging right there. I got sick on Thursday. Thursday night, I wrote it Thursday morning. I got sick Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, I was feeling a little bit better. I got up, I had a couple of meetings, and I was already behind on stuff, so I said, I got to take these meetings. I went to one meeting, and during, when I finished that meeting, I needed to go in the back of the parking lot to take some pictures of a few things I saw. I'm in the back of the parking lot, and I'm taking pictures, and I see, probably like towards the back of the church, I see someone taking pictures of me while I'm taking pictures of what I need to take pictures of. And I was too sick to chase that dude down. Because if I felt better, I would have hopped in my car and I would have sped over. Because I looked, and the person, and then they jumped in their car and they drove off. And I laughed. I said, Lord, what was that all about? He said, that's a foretaste. 
of what you asked me for. He's going to give you foretaste of what you ask for. And I said, oh, God. Okay, well, I can handle that. I can handle it. Because, God, this is what I'm believing you for. Because I am like Nehemiah. I'm believing for what the temple to be rebuilt. That's what Nehemiah, he was like, he gets before the king. He's completely prepared. And then in verse 8, it says this. The generous hand of my God was with me. And the king gave everything I wanted to me. When I met the governors across the river, I showed them the king's letters. See, God is going to put you before people. He's going to put you before people that you could never imagine. That's a good place to clap. You're looking for a mortgage? How did you end up across from the bank president? See, this is what I'm thinking. I'm at another high Kislev level. I'm not looking to sit across from an ordinary person. Take me to the high place. Take me to the king. Take me to the people that are in complete authority that can give me the keys to everything that I need. I don't think you guys are getting Kislev, but I'll let you rest right there. In Kislev, we have to be ready. We see Nehemiah was ready. And then he gets in front of the king. He makes these petitions. The king gives him everything. And then he's set. He's set to go on his way. When you are set to go on your way, don't think it's going to be easy, but I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. He said he starts going towards the city. The governors are seeing his paperwork. And then he gets to the place that needs to be rebuilt. And the mayors from everywhere come and start helping him. Not just the people but people in high places. And the mayors, and I'm not talking one or two mayors, I'm talking mayors, come and help. And they're, and they're with pride. They're like, hey, we'll take this corner of the wall and we'll start building. And others are like, well, we'll take this corner and this'll be, this'll be our brick to lay and this'll be our beam to, to nail together. And, and, and it started reminding me of like, I remember years ago, do you remember this mom when we, we uh, made the petition to buy, purchase chairs? And we said, hey, can everyone um, just purchase, if every person purchased a chair, we could have chairs for the whole sanctuary. And I remember my mom, she took it so seriously. She was like, I'm purchasing a chair for the church. And she all but sold her name in the chair. When the chairs came, she literally, you know this is true. Y'all know this is true about my mom, right? She literally took the chair and she said, this is my chair. And if somebody sat in her chair on a Sunday, oh my God, you would get the stare down. That is my chair. And I'd be like, Mom, but everybody bought chairs. Like, it's really not your chair. She was like, it is my chair. But it was with great pride that she purchased that chair. And this is what God is saying. And when all the mayors and their, and their people came, they were taking pride in the building of the kingdom, building of the wall. And God is saying, listen, we've lost the pride that we need in the building of the kingdom. You know how I know we've lost the pride? Because we're not super excited every time we come into the building. See, your tithes and your offering, they extend throughout the nations. When, when um, Pastor Mohan Babu was here, he talked about the, build, the, the building up of the churches that go all through remote parts of India up in the cut, places that people can't go to. And he was like, thank you. 
Thank you for what you're giving. I mean, when I see a young person uh, worshiping and singing and crying out to the Lord, when I see Joe and Danica training and pouring into the next generation, I say with great pride, my God, my tithes and offering are doing this in the kingdom of God. Oh my God. I mean, I'm so grateful. God is like, let's not look at everything as ordinary because he's saying in this passage, he's saying, you're even looking at me as if I'm dirt. And he's like, I gave you life so that you would have life more abundantly. And if I'm giving you life so that you can have life more abundantly, I'm trying to teach you and give you the statutes and the wherewithal to walk through the kingdom of darkness and be the light that I'm calling you to be and to tear down strongholds in your city, to tear down strongholds in your family. I mean, when I go and I see my daughter and I say, my God, oh, my God. I said to her the other day, I said, you know, um, did you give Peyton candy? Because she was trying to, like, hide her little candy, and she knows she's not supposed to have candy. And she said, Mom, I don't do that anymore. The light has come. She was like, that was the old me. No, no, no. And I just looked at her. And I said, the light has come. My God, there's nothing ordinary in your kingdom. Everything in your kingdom is filled with great revelation and power and anointing. And if you begin to walk in the power and the anointing of this Jewish calendar, this next 19 days, every step, that you take every time you cry out to the Lord and you say, Lord, give me the instruction that I need for the next 19 days to illuminate the paths in my life to success. And I believe that no one in here wants success just for themselves. I believe that every person in here has someone that you want success for more than you want success for yourself. I believe that my grandmother is looking down from the heavenly saying, Mona, all that I did was so that you would be more successful than I could have ever been. This is the month of power and anointing. This is the month that you will decree and declare what the word of the Lord says. I forgot this morning to to bring this uh, book, and I received this book during our succession service. And if you've ever written on moleskin paper, has anyone ever written on moleskin paper? It's a different anointing, right? Yes, see me after, we'll talk about moleskin. So I received this from uh, my mother-in-law, and I was so happy, I want you to know I still use it, moleskin, there's nothing like it, and I'm telling you, when you go to another level, it's moleskin. So I began to write in this book what the Lord was saying to me, and I believe I'm going to show you some things to do in your life, and it takes work, but if you're going to be successful, you, you need to do the work, and I believe that every single person in this room today is appointed to be here. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here by accident. Cameron, God has great, amazing, powerful things for you. You've got to put all this into practice, and it's going to happen very quick, and it's going to blow your mind because that's what he wants to do for you. I arise to establish my authority and God-given right as a child of God. I am determined to succeed today. I adapt successful thoughts as my own. I master in creating success. I mimic what successful people do. Each day I'm growing more successful. I enjoy the success brings me. I will ask for the future that has been established for me. See, some of you are living in a future that was established for you that was not established by God. So you have to write different words. See, this is the month, the month of Kislev is the month that your words have extreme power. So God wants you to write a new revelation for yourself. Jenny, words that were spoken over you are now cut to the root. You're going to write a new declaration for yourself. 
And you're going to walk in the authority and the power that the Lord has given you. You're going to sing the words of the Lord. Whenever you sing anything else, it doesn't even have the anointing that your voice has when you're up here. God's doing a new thing in your life. And you're going to walk in it. You're going to be before the throne of the Lord. He's going to give you clear instruction. You're brilliant, you're powerful, you're amazing. You're going to walk in it. God is not playing around on today. He has things to unlock in the heavenlies for you. I don't know what he's called you to do, but if you just trust and believe, my God, we can take the city. I am worthy of all the blessings that I receive. There are people that make you feel that you're not worthy of the blessings that God gives you. See, God woke me up one day and told me to go to the Mercedes dealer and ask for white, black leather interior, seat seven. I don't know nothing about Mercedes. I don't care about cars. I walked in, and the people looked at me like I was crazy because I did look crazy. I had black sweatpants on. My hair was crazy. I didn't look cute like I look today. I didn't know the model. I didn't know the make. I didn't know nothing. And they said, what? I said, white, black leather interior, C7. The guy comes out, and he's looking, just looking. He got an attitude, and it was a black man. Big, burly, just looking at me like, oh. I know he's thinking, these black women, she ain't got nothing. She's probably claiming and faming. She just want to get in something and take a selfie. <laughs> he comes out and he goes, yeah, um, you might want to look at a level down. I said, is this the only one you have? No, this is what I'm looking at. And I said, let me go talk to my husband, and I'll be back. It took a couple of days to talk to Pastor Matt. Because I let the Jesus do the talking. I didn't know. I, I still, I can't even think of the model of my car. Honestly, I don't know. I mean, but when I roll up, people be looking at me like, oh. I was driving on Blue Hill Avenue, and this lady, she kept beeping and I was like, I was thinking she was from Jubilee. So I put my window down. I said, you're from Jubilee? She was like, no, your car. She said, girl, that car is bad, man. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, thank you. But see, people will make you feel like you don't deserve stuff. But nobody can make me feel that way. You know why? Because God gave me that car. I didn't even want that car. And right now, I'm like, Lord, I don't know what's next, but praise the Lord, when you wake me up and give me another color and tell me where to go, I'll lay. Yeah, yeah. See, God wants to give you the best. Do you know that my car is the, it was the best car on the lot? I didn't even know that because I don't know nothing about cars. But God wants to give you the best. Another thing that happened to me, is that everybody kept asking me, Pastor Mona, we know you love shoes. Do you have a pair of red bottoms? And I was like, mm-hmm. Because all I'm thinking is, how much are those shoes? I'm a bargain shopper. But don't you know the Lord took me to New York and blessed me with three pair? Not one, not two. I'm telling you, three. And guess what? Someone gifted me a pair, and the other two only cost $500. Three pair. Guess what? I wore those shoes one time because they hurt. <laughs> don't, don't get caught up. But you know what? The Lord just wanted me to, every time I look at them, I say, Jesus, look what you did. I don't even wear them things. But that's what God wants to do. He wants to unlock. But you have to listen. You have to be still enough. And then you've got you've to, I will adjust my thinking to be a success. I will read books pertaining to success, money management, empowerment. My subconscious mind is helping me to succeed. My subconscious mind is programmed for success. I received the prophetic word given to me in 2006 that I will have enough revenue to swim in. Swim. A pool of money? That's going to be me? Well, praise the Lord, because I don't operate in money. I operate in kingdom. Declare an enlargement of faith in your life. I received the prophetic word that 
I'm a businesswoman. I'm talented. I have a mindset for business. I have ideas other people don't think about. God wants to make me a wealthy woman. I adjust my thinking to be a success. My life is balanced. I'm a novelist. I'm before most. I will ask. I will seek. I will knock until the doors open. Christ is the solid rock on which I stand. I have his heart. He has my heart. I believe that the word of God is true. I'm a beautiful gate. I make all things beautiful. Everything I touch turns to gold. Do you know how, you know how long it took me to write all of this? It didn't just take a day. It took some time. Then everywhere you go in my house, I have something posted that speaks to my future. And I'm telling you that you can do the same. You have 19 days. You have 19 days in the month of Kislev. Say Kislev. 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 You're going to walk in the anointing and the power that Jewish people walk in all the time because we're going to study their calendars. We're going to know how they're successful and how we're not. This is the month of the arrow. And I'm not talking Sagittarius astrology. I'm talking this is the arrow of Benjamin. We are from the tribe of Benjamin. We are from the lineage of Jesus. We are the head. We are not the tail. We are above only. We are not beneath. We have come to have life more abundantly. We're going to decree and declare some things. So... What we can see in Nehemiah is that, one, we need to be ready. Say, be ready. Be ready. Guys, guys, this is the other thing. Y'all allowed everything else everywhere else. Get loud in church. We're going to be ready. What? Be ready. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to what? Be ready. We're going to be ready. Then after we're ready, like Nehemiah, because he was ready because he, he went to the throne of God and he asked God for his instruction. God, what do you want me to do? I'm telling you, God has given me a master plan for how he wants me. Oh, man, I can't even, I can't even go into it. Get before the Lord and he will give you a master plan. Then after you get the master plan, after you're ready, then you have to get set. <laughs> what I'm talking about. After you get set, because now you're ready, somebody comes up to you and they ask you, you know, what do you want? And then you're like, oh my God, this is what I want. I mean, I have it all written down right here. What did you ask me? And they're like, I mean, I was just asking you what you want. And I was, oh, because I thought you wanted to see what I want. And, and you're like, okay, this is what I want. This is, this is the playbook. This, this, is, this is everything I want because I, I petitioned the Lord. I wrote it down. I took the time. I, I lived in Kislev. I, I took the next 19 days and I, and I wrote it all down. And I said, God, you know, at one point I didn't want a different house. But then I started saying, God, um, you know, when the paparazzi is following me, I, I'm going to need a high gate. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to need tinted windows. I mean, I mean, I'm gonna need different wigs. <laughs> this is why I'm wearing a wig. Because I need to look different. I was like, oh God, I think I need a new house. I mean, when I'm having dinner parties, we can't all gather together because I need a big open floor plan. I mean, I'm starting to write stuff down like that. I mean, I'm thinking, I'm like, God, I mean, God, I mean, you're telling me I'm gonna take the city? I mean, if I'm going to take the city, i got to be ready. I, I, I'm saying, God, um, okay, all right. Um, I need to get people prepared so that when I have, you know, so much money and I can write the check. Um, okay, what do you need the check for? <laughs> I, I need to see your plan. So I need everybody to have a plan so that when my plan comes to fruition, I can help your plan. Okay. He said, first I need you to be ready. Then I need you to get set. And as you're getting set, I mean, I need you to think. I need you to think of all the details. Um, okay, God, I'm going to need a bigger refrigerator. Because <laughs> there's probably going to be more people in my house. 
Um, I'm going to need a cook. Oh, my God, Lord, I'm going to need a house cleaner every day. I mean, because I can't pick up after these kids, take care of the business, run the corporation, help with the church. I mean, I can't do it all. I mean, he's starting to show me stuff. And I'm saying, oh, my God. Well, somebody's praying because they want to be a private chef. Oh, my God. Somebody's praying because they love children and they want to be a nanny. I mean, I'm the answer to someone's prayer. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is what God is doing. It's not just for us, but he's lining it up for everybody. And so now, okay, so now um, I got set, and, and, now, I'm, and, and now I'm ready. And um, I'm ready, I got set, and now this is the thing that blows my mind is Nehemiah. <laughs> Nehemiah with the help of a community of people, rebuilds the walls in 52 days. Something that he said was burned to cinder. 52 days. Do you understand that when God calls you to do something, (laughs) in an instant, instant, he can do the impossible. It only takes one interaction, one encounter with the king, and then boom, it happens. We look at Deuteronomy 28, and I think sometimes we need to go back and we need to start reading Deuteronomy 28 over and over and over and over again. Because in the month of Kislev, you've got to decree and declare the thing. Then you've got to walk in the anointing of faith. Let me tell you something about faith. A couple of weeks ago, Pastor Matt did an altar call. And he called me up to lay hands on people. Every time I went to lay hands on someone, I could hear the unbelief happening at the altar. I mean, it was just like, it was almost, I almost couldn't take it. It was like I would, I would lay hands and I'd be like, silence of unbelief. And I could hear the chatter going on in the head and, and I hear more. And then even got in the parking lot and someone, they were still talking unbelief. And, and the Lord said, you know what? He said, what happens with my people, it's, it's like what the word says. They hear a word, but it, it's just on stony ground. And God is like, listen, I'm telling you, silence the unbelief. I, I know maybe your mom didn't make it. Maybe your dad didn't make it. Maybe he was absent. Maybe, maybe your teacher spoke negativity into your life. I had teachers that spoke negativity, but I was so grown. I was like, that's not what my mother said, and that's not what my grandmother said. I could do anything I put my mind to. See, silence the unbelief because you can make it. I don't care what was spoken over you. Speak something different over your life as of today. (laughs) Kept hearing all that unbelief, and and, and the Lord said, people have to silence the unbelief if they're going to walk in the anointing and the power of my word. And so this is how you can do it. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Maybe you don't know what to say. But Deuteronomy 28 can help you decree and declare a thing. See, God operates in the invisible. He said, you know, when he came on the scene, there was, the earth was dark and void of nothing. And he said, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. You are the light. So God operates in the invisible. It it says it like this in Romans 4, 17. We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. See, God wants to make something out of you when you're a nobody so that when you're somebody, you can say it's because of Jesus. 
then isn't that what we've always read in the scripture, God saying to Abraham, I set you up as a father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do only what God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word, make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, see Kislev is the month of hope. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. See, it doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in today. Even though it may seem hopeless, you can call on the name of Jesus and say, as the Jews have said, I am in the month of Kislev, a month filled with hope. Then when everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but what he thought and said God would do. And so he was made a father of the multitudes of people, and God said to him, you're going to have a big family. See, God operates in your future with the condition of obedience, not perfection. <laughs> obedience, not perfection. I'm an imperfect person. Catch me in the morning without my coffee. Cafe Bustelo. The strong Spanish coffee. I'm imperfect. But I strive to be obedient. And in Deuteronomy 28, it says this. If you listen obediently to the voice of God and heartily obey all of his commandments that I command you today, God, your God, will place you on high, high above all the nations of the world. All of these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you because you have responded to the voice of God. Listen, yesterday I was weeping before the Lord over this word, Kislev. I couldn't believe that I had studied, studied, prepared, prepared, and four days before the Lord gave me the message of Kislev. And I'm weeping. I was weeping since 5 o'clock in the morning. And I go, and the Lord told, had told me to do something. He told me to send out these five gifts. And I was preparing them. And then I heard my granddaughter rustling around. And I said, what are you doing? She said, I have detention. I'm like, oh, my God, I wish you would have told me. So then we go out. And as I'm walking out the door, there's a package. But I knew that I could not open that package until I dropped her off because I knew there was something because of my obedience to send those five things out that God was going to show me something in this package. I dropped her off. I read the card. The card said, I bought this for myself, but God told me to give it to you. I took it out, and I had been saying to God, God, I need you to overwhelm me. I mean, you're doing so many things in my life, but I, I, I need to be overwhelmed by you to know that I'm walking in the power and the anointing that you want me to walk in. When I took the package out, it was a sweatshirt that said, God's about to blow your mind. When I tell you don't take what's going on in our church for granted. God has just put together a national conference for you women. You have until the 22nd to register for $99. You want big names, you want it all that, I gave it all to you on a platter. But I'm telling you right now, once I put it out to the nation, the nation will come and there are only 1,200 seats, so you will be left out. So I'm telling you, God is about to blow our minds. The women that are coming, God put them together. I didn't ask for them. The only person I asked for was Lisa Bavere. She said no several times. God knew. I said, God, if you want me to continue with these women's conferences, she'll say yes. And within a couple of days, she said yes. She is a national speaker. She annihilates the kingdom of darkness. She brings light wherever she goes. She's a girl with a sword. So God said to me, Mona, no, I want you to continue because you are going to be a gift to the city. I'm calling you to be a mother to the city of Boston. I'm calling you to be a game changer. I'm calling you. I'm calling you to make huge, huge change in the system of DCF. I'm calling you to annihilate the opiate crisis. I've put you in all of these things because not just to, to 
the enemy trying to bring you and kill you because he did try to kill me, but he can't kill me because I'm a child of God. Not just to be killed, but to be an overcomer. I'm saying all this to just say, don't take the kingdom of God as something ordinary. So I get this sweatshirt that says God is going to blow your mind. And I, and I just left it like it was a baby right in, in my car on, in the seat. And I said, God, I'm waiting because I know you're going to blow my mind. I received the word of the Lord. And I want you to receive it too. Stand with me. God's going to blow your mind. He's just not trying to blow Mona's mind. He's trying to blow all of our minds. Whatever you decree on this day, whatever you decree and declare for the next 19 days according to the word of God, it, it shall come to pass as long as you have no unbelief. God's doing a new thing in this house. Don't get left behind. Don't let your unbelief, don't let words that were spoken over you when you were younger keep you from the things that God has for you. We're going to walk in a new anointing. I decree and declare today that you will have sleep because God wants to give you new dreams and visions. The days are longer so you can dream more. New dreams are being released in this house right now. I decree and I declare today that you are the head, that you are above, that you sit in high places, that even though the world is in shambles around us, we're coming as the kingdom of light to bring new rules, new laws, new statutes. Wherever we are, God is going to put us at the top. I decree today a level of faithfulness when it comes to your destiny. No more television. Forget about these shows. They're stupid anyway. Sit before the king. Get your master plan. Because he wants you to change some things. And when you finish, then watch TV for entertainment. We have no time for foolishness. We have no time for games. Playing is out. I don't know your name. I can't think of it right now. But I know that God wants you on the stage. You, young man, there's something that God wants to do in your life. You need to get quiet before him so he can show you the people you need to talk to. Because he has a destiny for you that you cannot even imagine. You can't imagine it. I see it in the spirit. There's a heavy anointing in this place. We're going to pull it down today. Dreams and visions are in this place right now. There's a new anointing that's coming through. I felt it a couple of weeks ago when Pastor Matt was praying. I felt an angelic presence in this room. I heard angels singing over our heads. He told us to kneel down and get the instructions from the Lord. And I remember kneeling down. And the Lord said to me, Mona, you're doing everything that I've already commanded you to do. Keep doing it. But I'm telling you, there's a new level that the Lord wants to take us to. He's going to tell you to do things that seem so strange. How strange is it for me to walk into a dealer? Don't know the name or model or nothing of a car, just a color, how many it seats, what the interior looks like, and what comes out the finest. God wants to do the same thing for you. He has jobs. He has scholarships. He has, he has so much in store. I silence the unbelief of the enemy right now. I decree and I declare that we're going to be blessed coming in. We're going to be blessed when we go out. We're going to be blessed in the city. We're going to be blessed in the field. We're blessed as we come. We're blessed as we go. 
My God, you're going to seat us in heavenly places. We thank you for the dignitary officials that you're going to place us in front of. We thank you that you, we're going to be ready when someone asks, what do we want? We'll pull out our book. I thank you. I thank you for your master plan. You've already given it to us in our word. Now it's time for us to live it out. We don't have time for doubt. You already created us. You created us even before the world came to existence. You knew our purpose. You knew our destiny. You knew our flow. You knew who we'd sit next to. You knew who we'd empower. You knew who we'd give the scepter to. So, Father, I give the scepter today. The scepter of belief in what you've called us to at this season. The next 19 days will be filled with miracles, signs, and wonders. Those who are listening on live stream, take hold of what the word of the Lord is saying to you. Stretch your hands forth. Believe that when you say to this mountain, be thou moved, that it will be moved. God, we come in power. We come in victory. We come in anointing. We thank you for the next level that we are taking us to. We no longer walk around like lowly servants. We walk around in the kingdom as light bearers, as princesses, as queens, as kings, as royalty. God, we take everything that you have for us. We don't play with the enemy. He is under our feet. He already fell from heaven. He doesn't have victory over us. What came to kill me only made me stronger. God, thank you for your people. Thank you for this new work that you're going to do in them. Thank you for this next 19 days. Thank you for the testimonies I'm going to hear. Thank you, God. We pull it all down. It's in you that we live, move, and have our being. And we take it all, all that you have for us. In Jesus' name.